Greetings, my name is Benjamin Forback. I'm a PhD student in atmospheric science at the University of Helsinki. Okay, so let's start with the very basics. What is remote sensing? And the definition of remote sensing is taking a measurement of a desired target without making physical contact of the object. In general, remote sensing refers to satellites, but it actually can mean any everyday uses, and, and there are lots of uses that we will uh, go over in a little bit. Um, there, there are two types of remote sensing. The first type is active remote sensing, and what that does is it sends a beam of energy. It measures the energy that bounces off of a target, and then from that, you can learn the type of object, location of the object, speed of object, among other things, too. Some examples include weather radar. That's one we're probably pretty familiar with. LIDAR, which is a laser beam. And police radar is, is in a way, also a form of remote sensing because they're measuring uh, the speed of your car. And also medical imaging, in a way, is remote sensing because they're sending energy, such as x-rays, uh, through your body to take a picture of what's inside you without actually inserting any kind of object into your body. The other type of remote sensing is called passive remote sensing, and it doesn't have any source of energy of its own, but what it does is it receives visible light that's reflected from the target or infrared energy emitted from the target, and in some cases it does actually measure visible light emitted from a target, for example, uh, nighttime imagery. And some examples include weather satellites, Earth imaging satellites, and again, these night band satellites. So how does remote sensing work? So the sensor receives some energy, and again, in the case of active remote sensing, it sends that energy first. And let's talk about the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Now, all objects emit electromagnetic radiation based on their temperature. This is called the Stefan-Boltzmann law. And because we have temperature raised to the fourth power, it's very highly dependent on the temperature. So when we take the Stefan-Boltzmann law and rearrange it, we can measure the energy using this sensor. And then we can rearrange the equation and figure out what the temperature is. And that's pretty easy to do. That's one of the very basic uses of remote sensing, just like in this infrared camera of the person there. So then we have absorption bands. And gases absorb uh, radiation at specific wavelengths. So therefore, by measuring these bands, we can infer information about the target's composition, for example. So, for instance, if we want to know uh, the composition and what gases are in the atmosphere, we can take these various absorption bands and look at what kind of light is passing through or scattered by the atmosphere, or what's absorbed in, the case, in this case. Furthermore, by taking certain ratios of band, we, we can get even further information about the target's properties. For example, chemical properties, water content, the health of leaves, and much, much more. So, how do we measure wavelengths? There's a wide range of wavelengths. These are also called spectral bands that can be measured. Now, in the case of active remote sensing, it's pretty easy. You can just choose the desired application. For passive remote sensing, again, we can measure light reflected from the sun, or we can measure light emitted from the target. And here is just one example of, of one uh, satellite that measures 22 different bands. And then with active remote sensing, we can also determine the location and speed of an object. So to find a location, since we know the speed of light, we can measure the time it takes for a pulse of light to travel from the instrument to the target, bounce off the target, and then return back to the instrument. And from that, we can figure out how far away the target is. And for speed, there's a phenomenon called the Doppler effect. And so when energy bounces off of a target, and the target is moving, the wavelength is slightly shifted. And we can measure this shift and then determine the velocity. And here's an example. Um, the location and speed of a tornado on a weather radar is 
actually pretty easy to, to figure out based on the speed and the location of the tornado.